Welcome to the Tough Hop and welcome to another episode. My name is Maria Makuli and I am so excited to be here again on this platform with Mr. Njai. Welcome. Thank you, Mariama. Today we have our honorable guest, who is nobody other than Mr. Buba Sanyan, who is the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Lands, Regional Government and Regional Re Re Religious Affairs. Welcome, Mr. Sanyan. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is uh, Buba Sanyan. I currently work as the Permanent Secretary 1 at the Ministry of Lands, Regional Government and Religious Affairs. Is your ministry aware of existence of real estate developers or agents in this country? Yes, the ministry is um, uh, fully aware mm -hmm. and uh, we see them as a complementary service uh, to provide shelter to Gambians. Even though, I have to point this out, we have a lot of people into the business mm -hmm. who are not playing the game right. And uh, we are aware of um, some of these problems, and then we are working to come up with um, uh, what we call the real estate bill, which is um, uh, in progress. We are also looking at some of the ways to minimize the damage onto the local people by um, uh, we engage the Minister of Justice to look at the registration process as of now, mm -hmm. so that we can also. Um, uh, bring trust in that industry. We have very genuine people in the real estate industry. We have people who have um, uh, um, uh, made impact in the real estate um, uh, industry. So uh, the name um, uh, should not be seen as um, uh, we have only bad people. So we are trying to see how we get the categories. You can be an agent if you want. Mm -hmm. Just register as an agent and deal with the people who have the capacity, who have the capability to build a real estate company. You can be their agent and then do limited, limit yourself to that. But not just um, uh, because I can have access to land, mm -hmm. you just um, uh, try to get into um, uh, actual uh, business when you don't have the capacity and you don't have the know-how. Uh, and that can create a lot of problems. But definitely we are aware of them and we are working with the relevant stakeholders to see how we regularize the, uh, the sector. Dealing with matters. You know, if you want to give timeline and where you have to consult other institutions, it is normally difficult. But what, what I can say for certain is that um, uh, the, we have a zero draft that we also had stakeholder consultation on. But this is at the level of the government level. Mm -hmm. Then we are going, going to escalate this. We have even set up um, a, a committee um, uh, that, that is working on the, on the bill to make sure that the gaps that we realized during that consultation um, uh, have been adjusted. And also now we're going to call up real estates themselves mm -hmm. and, then, and then, you know, for us to engage them because this is going to be about them. Mm -hmm. They need to be part of it. They need to be part of the formulation of the laws and then be, be part of the, the whole process. Mm -hmm. So we're going to engage them as well as other stakeholders like Ministry of Justice who have been very instrumental in this. Mm -hmm. So we are going, I know it's slow, but then we'll get there. And then we, want, we don't want to rush this because we've seen, as um, uh, stated by Mr. Njai, um, a lot of people um, uh, are losing a lot of fortune yeah. out of um, uh, this real estate business. Mm -hmm. and, and recently we have seen on papers some people have been arrested mm -hmm. and then some people have been um, hiding, they, have been looking, they, they, they are looking for them. Mm -hmm. So these are all issues. I think the real estate affairs has come um, uh, as, is, as, as is a sort of a surprise. Yeah. We are not prepared for it. Before we get the regulations, then it comes boom. Mm -hmm. Then we have to now work towards um, uh, regulating them. But I think um, uh, before December, we will have something that we can present to say this can be a working document that we will um, uh, validate mm -hmm. and then now escalate it to a stage where we will be able to. Um, uh, um, have that finalized and then operational. So that means the government is looking into regulating the real estate sector? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, they are, but so, so let, me, let me just come there and to assist you on this. Um, we, we, the Gambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, they have done a study, which is published, I mean, it's public. It's called the study on the state of consumer welfare, welfare in the real estate industry. Right. So just to assist you, that the government 
is not sitting on their laurels, but something is being done. Yes. So, so the GCCPC mm. has already done a study um, uh, on the state of consumer welfare in the real estate sector. Yes. So for the interest of the, uh, the public, in case you are interested in this study, it is available. And um, since it was shared with us, we can share it. It's public. Or you can, you can contact the, the GCCPC. So this shows that really government is doing something. Probably the demand is higher, you know, is faster yeah. than you, the regulator. Right. And it's normal because we have um, a population explosion. Everybody's interested in land, mm -hmm. you know. And um, the fact is that Gambia is densely, densely populated. So we, we, we should really be wary about what is going on in the Gambia. The Gambia is not just like, like for example, Senegal or other mm -hmm. countries in Africa. You know, if you look at the population density, that is the number of people within a certain area, mm -hmm. ours is very high. Very, very high. So the faster we work on this, the better for all of us. So we just want to compliment you that you're working on this. And you've been very brave to, see, to say that probably from now to December. Yeah. So uh, your, the public is there. Probably it will now motivate you and your staff to yeah. move faster, but we rest assured that, you know, people like us within the industry and my colleagues are more than ready to assist you in any way to make this a reality. Mm -hmm. I speak on behalf of the real estate sector, and I think I duly have some authority to say so. Mm -hmm. We are willing Thank to you. partner with government because this is to our interest to stop all these that are happening. Yeah, thank you very much. And then we will definitely reach out to you. I think this is um, a, a, a business of everybody. Yeah. And then uh, we recognize the fact that we don't want people to just brand the real estate as just um, a bad investment or there is a, it's a criminal investment. Mm -hmm. So we recognize the fact of their contribution to the national building. And then we want to always um, uh, tell the general public that it's not the real estate business that is bad. It's the people who gets there, mm -hmm. who are the wrong people, who does the wrong thing, mm -hmm. and then and they actually um, affect people. But it's not actually the real estate uh, business that is um, bad. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, still talking about obtaining a land, uh, what does one need to do prior before commencing or development of that particular land? Yes, uh, as we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. uh, you need your documentations in place. Uh, and then you need a building permit or a fencing permit uh, or development permit generally. If you want to do development, you can call it a development permit. In our laws, development starts with site clearing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, site clearing is considered to be a development. And if you don't get a permit and then you start clearing, you might be uh, charged because you'll be offending. The reason why they consider all that stage development because there are certain species of trees which need to be protected. So getting a permit will require some of those things to be put into consideration and then you can do your development while some of you have been I'm sensitive to some of those things. Uh, but what you require is the permit, development permit. A development permit can be broken down into fencing permit or building permit or generally some um, site preparation and uh, beautification and all whatnot. You get permit for all those things by right. But before you get to this um, permit level, as I explained earlier, you need to go up to um, uh, occupancy level. You need to have occupancy of a certificate with you so you can apply for um, uh, this uh, uh, development permit. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when, when applying for development permit, what, are, what, what is required to apply for a development permit? You've got, okay, but go ahead, I don't want yeah, to clear it. Yeah, yeah. development you can permit. detail out, so yeah. people will understand what you require to submit in order to get a development permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, development permit, the, 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 the documentation starts at the occupancy level. If you get occupancy, uh, certificate of occupancy, you can apply for development permit. Or if you go to an extent of leasing the property, you can still apply for development permit at, with, that, with, with a lease. Mm -hmm. Al also, if it is an assignment, maybe you buy this lease land from somebody, has assigned the property to you, you can also use that to apply development permit. And development permit, if it is building, what you require is you have to get 
uh, your plan, your building plan. Mm -hmm. At least three sets mm -hmm. of building plan has to be prepared. And it has to be prepared with the right um, engineering um, uh, drawings and also if it is a story building and also with the right um, uh, uh, spacing. I think uh, the technical guys will come, they will deal mm -hmm. into this mm -hmm. in detail. Yeah. Yeah. But in short, we, want, we, we need to give um, uh, real spacing, that is the, 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 the setup uh, offset from the fence to the building. Um, uh, there are requirements that they look for. And also in the, in the building itself, there are requirements that they look for the public spaces that need to be, if you are building more than two bedrooms, you need to have at least a toilet and uh, maybe a kitchen, a dining. So these are things that they look at technically and then they will, um, uh, but then uh, at one stage the Deputy Permanent Secretary Technical will come, I wa mm. he will be dealing with more of these small technical matters, mm -hmm. um, uh, giving more explanation into them mm -hmm. so that he breaks it down. But then basically what you require is the permit, uh, sorry, the, the, the ownership that is either occupancy, lease or uh, assignment. And then you have uh, my building plan that is having the right offsets from the fences mm -hmm. and also having the meet, meet, it meets the um, uh, setup requirement of uh, uh, of the house. Yeah. That is, you have a living room, you have a um, uh, kitchen, yeah. all what not, the setup requirement. So once those are done, and also if it is a story building, you need some of the um, uh, engineering drawings mm -hmm. to support that. Then that is what um, uh, required for you to do to get a permit. A development control permit. Yes. Yeah. Further now, I know in some countries that I have worked. Um, uh, drawings can only be submitted with the stamp of some approved engineering or architectural bodies. Is it something that we have here? Because, you know, in some countries you have an association of architects or association of engineers or whatever. So when you submit any plan, you know, you must be authorized to draw the plan, you know, prior to being given approval. Is it something that exists here or is, if not, are there any plans for this? It doesn't exist uh, as a compulsory requirement for um, uh, submission of the uh, plan, but um, uh, we are working towards that. And the architectural organization, they already have their organization here, and then they are working towards that mm -hmm. to see how um, uh, these people will be lancing. And uh, just like the surveyors, we want to lance in them, we also want to have them lance in such that they will be able to um, uh, authenticate all the plans that they draw or somebody draw in their name mm -hmm. so that they can confirm and then sign such that it, it, it meets all the reinforcement requirements and all what not so that um, uh, it becomes authentic. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the biggest challenge you face as a ministry in controlling development? Yes, another very important question. Uh, the challenges in controlling development is, is, is one enforcement of the existing laws. Uh, the laws that we have, even though they are, uh, most of them are absolute, they are for a long time, but some of them are still applicable mm -hmm. and they we are using them. But um, uh, the enforcement is, uh, is a problem. That is, that is one of the aspects. And also the updating of those policy documents itself. We need to update most of those policies to actually reflect the realities, the, the current realities on the ground. So these are um, uh, big challenges that we have uh, in terms of um, uh, controlling development. I think it has to do with enforcement and the, the, the laws themselves to be. But the biggest problem is the attitude of people. Mm. Um, uh, the attitude of people, um, uh, especially uh, after the change, uh, people have become very much, um, uh, I don't know, uh, less law-abiding in this country. Mm. Uh, you see people fencing our technicians go, sometimes they attack them, mm. yeah, physically. Mm. Uh, we've, we face those instances where mm. our technicians are being abused um, uh, in the field. Uh, and this makes it difficult for one or two of them to go if there is a sensitive um, uh, control, build, uh, mm, development yeah. control that you have to do. Okay. But then we, have, we are also looking at some of these um, uh, constraints and also with the sectors. We have other sectors that we collaborate with. Uh, most of the time somebody might need a particular demolition now. We might not be able to do it because we need um, a police escort. 
and because we need to go through the procedures mm -hmm. and the police also need to go through their procedures before they can clear that process and now that sometimes become um, long um, uh, for, to acquire and now that becomes um, uh, another problem in, in enforcing um, uh, some of these um, uh, development control. So, so uh, actually then, then that brings me now to the consequences. Uh, you know, if you don't obtain a, a development control permit and then you start building. Once you start building, it means that, you know, there are consequences that you should suffer. So from what you have said now, uh, enforcing is a problem. So somebody now has got, well, they didn't get a permit even, but went ahead to put up a structure. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What can you do now? Yeah, by law, we are, all, we are empowered to demolish that house. Yes. That is our power. That is in the law, and the law backs us. And in fact, it's not, it doesn't only stop at demolition, but the person has to pay for our cost of doing that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is what the law provided for. Um, that we don't only demolish, but you, the person, whoever is doing that structure without the permit, should pay for the cost that we incur mm -hmm. in, in demolishing that house. That's where I said the enforcement issue comes in. Um, uh, because if you look at the development without permit in, under our law, Physical Planning and Development Control Act, it is that that building is not fit to, 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 to live in. Yes. Yeah, that is, that is, that is it. It doesn't, it's not fit to live in. Whether, whatever reinforcement you put there, mm -hmm. we consider it not fit because it doesn't go through the test. Mm -hmm. The test would have been the verification and vetting to confirm that the, 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 the specification that you have given for reinforcement, the steel bars, the concrete and all what not have been qualified and then you can use them. Mm -hmm. But if that is not done, that means um, uh, we just conclude that it's not fit um, uh, for, for, for habitat. Then at, as such, it should be demolished. Mm -hmm. So that is what the law says we should do. But it's not always reality? the case. It's not always because the case. Because you have a challenge. You have a challenge, you have a challenge yeah, yeah. to enforce. Yes. The uh, challenge uh, is, 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 is not only um, uh, about the, the, the institution itself mm -hmm. um, uh, in, 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 in terms of um, uh, willingness and readiness to, to go into these um, uh, demolitions. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, um, uh, the, some of these challenges are logistical challenges. Mm -hmm. We also face with a lot of logistical challenges. Uh, now that we are trying to build up these uh, departments, especially Department of Lands and Surveys and Department of Physical Planning, mm -hmm. uh, in the past, um, I think these departments were just left to die down and then they were not replacing staff. Uh, people retire, they are not being replaced. People, some people leave, they are not being replaced. And then the, 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 the institutions themselves has a skeletal um, uh, staff. Mm -hmm. So as such, they were unable to catch up with the rate of development um, uh, within the, the, the country. Mm -hmm. So this affected them. And also um, uh, the departments are working without like vehicles. Mm -hmm. You know, you want them to move these past two years we were able to um, uh, buy them through the support of Ministry of Finance to buy them some vehicle to make so they, they go on. At one point, there was what we call Development Control Week. Mm -hmm. It was very effective. Mm -hmm. What we do is the physical planning will choose a week within uh, a month and say this is a Development Control Week. And the whole ministry, the, from the ministry to the line departments, We'll avail them their vehicles. When we get to the office, mm -hmm. we'll say, okay, driver, you report at physical planning. They will use those vehicles, and they say, this week we are going to, let's say, Burfoot mm -hmm. and to Tanje and this area. They will just go, and then they will look at it. And it, was, it has proved very fruitful. Mm -hmm. But with time, this becomes difficult to achieve because these um, uh, logistics have not been, always been available, and then this has caused some problems with that. But it was very effective. So we, we need to double up uh, uh, as, as, as um, uh, uh, ministry and also um, uh, departments uh, to see how some of these things um, uh, can be managed. I, may, may I just ask um, here, because I, I, I served on the board of uh, the Development Control Board way back in, I think, in 93 or so. Uh, does it still exist? Do you still have a Development Control Board? We have what we call the Planning Board. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the um, uh, planning board for uh, the Greater Banyan area. Uh, the pl actually, they call it planning authority mm -hmm. for the Greater Banyan area, and each region has a um, uh, planning authority. And this planning authority at the regions is headed by the the, the governor, and uh, 
that is the land region area and the the in the in the state land area uh, that is uh, KM and uh, Bainyun is centralized at the uh, the physical planning. Uh, they serve as the chair to the some uh, planning authority. So these are the authority that does the planning. But then, you know, we have, we have to also understand that this country has been operating without a land policy. Mm. This country has been operating without the National Planning Board. Mm -hmm. This country has been operating, and the National Planning Board has the responsibility mm -hmm. to provide what we call the national plan. Mm -hmm. And out of the national plan, we will do the regional plan. And out of the regional plan, we will do the local plans. So you can imagine where you have all these gaps mm -hmm. not available, what will happen? Mm -hmm. You know, people are left to their own discretion. Mm -hmm. Even at the level of our, at our approval, mm -hmm. I can be working in Brookfoot. Discretionally, I will say this place, you know, is, is ideal for residential. And then in the next two years, I move, and then Mr. Njai comes in as the head of that um, uh, unit, and discretionally he said, no, but this place, looking at the development around it, no, it can, it, it's supposed to be residential. Mm -hmm. So now it, it, it sometimes applies on discretionary basis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of the lack of certain structures. Mm -hmm. But thank God, um, uh, we have now set up the National Planning Board. Mm -hmm. uh, this National Planning Board is now being functional mm -hmm. and they are taxed with the responsibility of creating the national plan, the mm -hmm. main national plan, whereby we'll say, as a country, this is the plan, physical mm -hmm. plan of the country. Mm -hmm. And then every region will have a regional plan. Mm -hmm. And under the regional plan, we will have what we call local plans, mm -hmm. whereby we'll have settlements having their individual plan. So all these things will be um, uh, connected to the national plan. So it will help us to control um, uh, and designate areas for certain uses and be able to control and manage them. Mm -hmm. Because we need to, if, for example, if we designate an area, we need to consult for the Ministry of Agriculture and say what part of, let's say, Como South is ideal for agricultural purpose. Mm -hmm. And then they identify this area and then we map it out and then say this area will be reserved for agricultural. Mm -hmm. You can own it, you can buy it there, you can sell there, but only for agricultural use so that we maintain that place for agriculture. Because as a country, we always um, uh, sing this song. Uh, we said we want to be food self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot be food self-sufficient when we don't even have enough space to yeah. farm. Mm -hmm. That we first have to designate areas. Uh, thank God this um, body is set up and uh, uh, we, they are now working to see how they can develop some of these plants. You know, where uh, I mean, we have them set up, the first plan was to have them set up. Mm -hmm. The next plan will be to have them, to provide them with resources to be able to um, uh, execute some of these functions. So that's what we are working on. Oh, that, that's the, you said the national, what was it called? The that's national, national Planning Board. National Planning Board. Yes. And um, uh, can we have the, is it, can you list out who the members are or? Yeah, the National Planning Board is chaired by Mr. Tumbul Danso. Okay, so it's private. It's private. In his yeah, private yeah, capacity. Yeah. Yes. It's private capacity as and Tumbul Danso. And Mr. Tumbul Danso is a trained architect and he was the managing director of social, social security. security. Yeah, we have yeah. some other members like Ablai, Ablai Mane. He was a former permanent secretary. He's still private. Ministry. Yes. Yeah. We also have, even though we have some government, um, uh, because of sectoral. Um, uh, in like agriculture, yeah. we have um, representative from agriculture. Okay. We have representative from Ministry of Works. We have representative from Ministry of Environment, Ministry okay. of Lands okay. in the board. But we have ex official members. Ex official members. Yes. But we have also um, apart from Ablai, we have uh, the Land Commission is also represented. I think uh, in the capacity of Mr. Sid Bari. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So competent, so, competent yeah, we try who to, are mainly with government, with government, but they are looking at their competence. Exactly. You know, to, to get them on the board. Okay, on the that, board. That's fine. Yes. But let me also ask, because we saw, for example, at the Ministry of Works. The Ministry of Works used to be, uh, a lot of functions that, that entail works and roads and so on, used to be held up by the Ministry. Are there any plans to have, you know, some national authority, which are semi-autonomous? Like, for example, the NRA, the National Rural Authority. Mm. Is there any plans to have it within the um, uh, Ministry of Lands or Ministry of Lands and, 
and regional, regional affairs. Because, because the thing is, your ministry is quite big and your responsibilities are, are quite huge. Mm -hmm. So are there any plans to have some authority which are semi-autonomous, semi which is not fully government, like quasi-government? Or if not, you know, if yes, when, when do you think this will be, will be in place? If, if no, why not? Yeah, we want to bring um, uh, what we call uh, the Urban Planning and Development Unit. Mm -hmm. We have seen that in the urban area, development is fast. Mm -hmm. And then we want to see how we can bring up a unit to come away. The when is, is a question because mm -hmm. this you have to deal with. It has financial right. implications. You have to put it on a budget. You have to know how much it's going to spend and you have to know whether the the current budget can handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, it's not as easy as um, uh, just to talk about it. It mm -hmm. has to go through those processes and then have them um, uh, in place. We have these bodies which are already in, in, in um, uh, been provided for either in the Constitution or in our Acts mm -hmm. that we should have set up. And this has not been on for a long time. One of them is the um, uh, Land Commission. Mm -hmm. the, the, the National Land Commission, this thing has been um, in the act for a long time, we did not set them up. And the land commission, the intention of the land commission is for them to be able to look into land problems independently. Mm -hmm. And then that independency of the land commission will enable them to look at our operations as well as a ministry. Mm -hmm. Where we go wrong, they can tell us. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot be a player and a referee at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we need somebody outside who can also tell us, who oh, look, no, no, no. This problem, you have been part of it. You have caused some problems. So that's why we have a land commission, and uh, Mr. Raymond Sock is the chair to that commission because mm. um, it's by provision of that act we have to get a judge as a part of as a uh, 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 head of that commission, and that we have MS 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 Job, um, uh, who is a, there was a director at both physical planning as well as uh gt board, GT board yeah. yes and we have our uh, buba Bari. we have um uh, nancy nancy Nyang as an yeah. administrator yeah. we also have one kemo conte who has served in governance mm -hmm. so it's multi-sectoral and these are people who are um, uh, independent not mm -hmm. working with the ministry they mm -hmm. only the, the director of land serve as their secretariat by um, uh, by by default because they are the they function uh, they serve as the land administrator, uh, administration arm. So the, most of the information they might need, they will need it from them. So they serve as their secretary. But then the rest of the work, they do it independently. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, they are, the people take their problems to them, and then they can look at it, and then also look at our part we play in that problem, and then come out with a recommendation, and then send it to the minister for, for execution. Well, that was a very fruitful conversation with Mr. Sanyang. Do join us next week for a continuation with him on this very topic. Till we come your way next week. Tough Africa Global presents the first Eco Smart City in the Gambia, the Tough City, located between Gunjur and Sifo. It is 30 minutes away from the Banjul International Airport. At Tough City, you will be able to live, work, play, and shop in a healthy multi-purpose community. This vibrant urban environment will meet your everyday needs with commercial, business, recreational and other complementary services to increase the value of your home. With up to 5,000 units of affordable homes on a 500 hectare land, Tap City will be twice the size of Banjul. Prime location, stunning properties and amazing discount of 20% for the first 50